So, you want to become a certified sterile processing technician? You think you have what it takes to work with instruments and get them ready for an operating room? Well, stick around. I have all your questions that you have asked and information on how to become a certified sterile processing technician and how to travel. This will be a part two series because there's a lot to cover. The first part will be about getting certified and, and the second part is going to be how to start traveling. Hi guys. I always wanted to do that. <laughs> I know I'm corny, but anyway, welcome to the channel. Hi, my name is Christina of Aquila Wonders, and you are here because you want some more information about being a sterile processing technician, a certified sterile processing technician. That is what I do. That's why I'm dressed in this beautiful blue. I also am at work, so if you hear noises in the background, it's because people are working. I'm not working because I finished my work, okay? <laughs> Let's not get it twisted. <laughs> you have to work first and then you can play. But yes, our census is low. And what I mean by census is we don't have a lot of surgeries um, that are on the schedule today or last night. So, and I work night shift. So that's why there's no one here, as you can see. Anyway, so we are here to talk about how to become a certified sterile processing technician and also how to travel doing so now if anybody had watched my videos okay are you watching my videos fell in love with healthcare i've always wanted to do healthcare actually i when i was little <laughs> my video of uh the get to know me video you would know a lot of things and one thing you would know is that i am a new yorker yeah what's good <laughs> Okay, there's going to be some corny stuff in here too, okay? We're going to make this fun. You're not going to just be all serious, blah, 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 blah. No. So, we're going to talk about how I got to where I am today, very briefly, because that video was long enough. So, if you want to watch uh, my history, my working history, then you can go ahead and watch that video. But we're going to concentrate on how to get certified and how to start traveling and some of the questions that you guys have asked me. And I'm going to add some of the questions along towards the end um, as they come about. But let's get to the nitty gritty. First off, there is two organizations that do sterile processing. And one of them is ISHM, the International Association of Healthcare Central Service Material Management. That's what that long acronym means and also CBSPD. Now, I am certified through ISHM for five years. I do, know, I do not know too much about CBSPD. You would have to go on their website, which I will leave here, and if you wanna get some more information, you would go there. But I do not know anything about their organization, how to get certified, um, nothing like that. So go there if you want to check it out. But we're just talking about Isham. Isham did not pay me to say anything. I am not affiliated with them, only through my certifications. So anything I tell you, I'm just going to read off their website. So that way you can't, you can fact check me, okay? I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to pull for Isham. I just know what I know. So I'm going to tell you what I know. Okay, guys? All right. So I am certified through Isham as a CRC. S T. That is Certified Registered Central Service Technician, also known as Sterile Processing Technician. That's a long name. But you are certified and you are registered through them. You have to pay a examination fee and you also have to pay a membership fee if you would like to be part of the ISHAM membership. Everything, again, is on their website, so you can go get all the details. It's a $10 yearly membership, and it's a, you have to get, and you have to get continuing education 
credits every year to maintain that. But we're getting away from the beginning. You gotta go to the beginning, Christina. Okay. So you're gonna go on Isham and you're gonna get the information on how to start. And how do you start is you're going to get the book. They have their own book manual and the workbook. Now you can also self-study. That means you can buy the book, buy the workbook, read the book, do the workbook, and then take the exam. You can take the exam without your 400 hours that is needed to be certified fully. Now that means you can get a provisional certification, meaning you also have to get a 400 hour hands-on work hours to get fully certified. So there's a provisional without the hours and then there's fully certified with the hours. So how do you get those hours? You have to work at a sterile processing department, either in ambulatory surgical center, you can work at an eye center, you can work in a hospital where I'm right now. Okay, so you need to do those hours to consider fully certified. We got this? Okay. So after you get those 400 hours, you submit it. You can submit it before you take the test, again, or after you take the test. Now, when taking the test, you are going to follow their workbook and their manual. It's the eighth edition. Again, everything's on their website. It is 24 chapters. It's a lot, okay? And you're gonna read it, and then you're going to um, take the exams, and you're gonna take practice exams in the workbook, and then you're gonna sit for the exam. I think the exam is three hours long, 150 questions. You don't have to sit there for three hours, but everybody says stay for three hours to finish the exam. I didn't stay the three hours, I only could do about an hour and I was ready to be done with it, okay? Now, this is a content outline of all that possibly can be on the test. They give you an outline for free. So go and look at the outline. If you can go through the outline and cross off everything that you know, you should be good and well prepared for the test, okay? And basically that's about it. It's a self-study course, but there are schools that do provide the course. And there are people like me who tutor for the course, and that is my business, um, CAA, Diamond Health Technology, and I tutor for examination preparation. Um, for the certificate exam. Do you pay for the, do you want to pay for the uh, course? That's up to you. I cannot tell you to do it or not do it. I did pass on the first try, but the test was not easy. Um, it was tricky. I don't know. That was five years ago. I don't know if it's better or not. They do have statistics on the website and they will show you how many people pass the exam. I, that's, I don't know if that's an indication on how hard the exam is, but at least you will know. So you go and you take the exam, and if you have your hours, you're fully certified. If not, you have to go get your 400 hours. You can get your 400 hours paid or not paid. I cannot tell you all of the places to go. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to apply for the sterile processing job Explain your situation, whether you have your 400 hours or you don't, and then you go from there. Some places, they want you to be certified and they want you to be experienced. That is how you go about doing that. You want to apply for the job, explain that you have the 400 hours or you need the 400 hours and you need experience and you want experience. So that's how you go about getting certified. All right, so now we got the certifications that are needed, the hours that are needed, provisional versus fully certified, and um, again, self-study versus going to school. Now, how do you start traveling? 
that is going to be dependent on what company you use and what um, how, how much experience you have also how good you are <laughs> now they don't know how good you are but I'm gonna have to explain that a little bit all right right now there's an influx of travel contracts a lot of people are leaving their job to travel and also there's a shortage of certified sterile technicians or basically there's a shortage of SPD people period so they hire travelers people who would come from a different state or a different area and come and fill in for their staff that they don't have or that um, may be on vacation whatever their needs are really is why they have um, travelers and you will come in and you will fill in for a position. Now, the contracts that I've seen right now, as of 2021, I've seen contracts as short as five weeks, eight, 13, um, which is 13 is usually the um, average. And I have been on contracts for a year. I'm in a contract currently and I've been here since February of 2021. I probably will be staying here until February of 2022. Now, to start traveling, like I said, you need to have a certification, but there are some companies that will take you without a certification. Um, you have to find them, and I'm going to give you guys the uh, Facebook page to where you can go and announce that you're looking for a travel position and you're not certified, and a recruiter is going to reach out to you. Now, I don't know all of the companies out there. I do not know all of the recruiters out there, so I can't tell you if all of them are legit or not. This is some stuff that you're gonna have to vet out for yourself. Um, there's a lot of good companies out there, and there's a lot of meh, you know? So I can't tell you about all of them. I haven't worked for all of them, but I've been working as a traveler for five years. I have been with um, three to four companies. Why so many? If one company doesn't have the pay package that I want, I'll just go to another company. If one company doesn't have the job in the area that I want, I go to a different company. If the job doesn't have the schedule that I want, I just go to a company that has what I want. Um, that is the beauty of it, but that also means that you have to apply to each one each and every one of those companies and go through their application process. And then you'll find out what jobs they have available and stuff like that, what shift you have available. So to do that, you have to, um, you have to go through all the different companies. All right. Now, um, another thing is after you, um, after you go through all those companies, what you're going to do is you're going to, get placed and then they give you money for hourly wages and if you're 50 miles outside of your home they're going to give you money for housing and food that's meal stipends pay packages do vary from i've been doing this for five years and um the lowest some some packages i saw are from 700 dollars. no lie 700 dollars a week to now I've seen a package for $2,500 a week. Some companies pay weekly, some companies pay bi-weekly. Again, I can't tell you everything about every company. You're gonna have to find out that for your own. So then you have um, the companies, different companies. You're gonna have different um, pay packages and you're gonna have different contacts, contract um, length, contract, Lengths. So you're going to go and do it that way. Um, what else? Okay, yes. To be considered a traveler and to get paid housing stipend and food stipend, according to the website and according to... Um, I'm not a tax professional either, okay? Please, guys. I'm just giving you what I know. You have to be 50 miles outside of your home state tax, Okay your home tax state, 15 miles away from your home, basically, 
to consider a traveler to get paid housing stipend, to get paid um, meal stipend. Now, that's for example, I'm from New York City. I could have easily went across, took the train, and went to New Jersey. I have to be in New Jersey, but 50 miles from where I was in New York. And that still would have considered um, a traveler, because that's 50 miles. And it could have just took me a train ride, or I could have worked in Connecticut, and I know that's far enough. And that's still considered a travel contract. And that's a train ride. And those train rides could be an hour, two hours. People do that commute all day, every day, five days a week. So just to give you an idea, if you are commutable and you don't mind driving an hour, like I'm in one part of um, the state and I could drive one hour and I'll do it. I'll drive hour and back. And that's still considered... Um, travel and you get the whole high you get the whole housing stipend and you get the meal stipend and you get um and you get your hourly wages they do pay you i need to tell you guys they do pay you hourly the hourly rate of minimum wage you make your money from the housing and meal stipend so and you also have to duplicate your expenses that is part of the IRS law. I'm not 100% like a tax expert, but you have to have to talk to the recruiter and talk to your tax, um, whoever does your taxes, to make sure that you qualify to um, be considered a traveler. And you want to make sure that you cross all your T's and dot all your I's, but you also have to duplicate your expenses. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And you can do that only for a year. Again, check with your tax professional, but you can only stay in the same area and work in that area for one year before you become considered a resident of that new area that you're working in. So you cannot do a contract for more than a year and still get travel and housing site. <laughs> Some companies do require you to have at least two years experience. Somebody asked me, but you said you started after six months. I'm not going to lie. I did start after six months. Did the company require me to have two years experience? I'm going to say yes and no. Are there some companies that require you to have only one year's experience? Yeah. You have to find the company that's going to accept you for what you have. Now, if we're going to be really, real, 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 real on this channel, which I am, I did not lie. I just did not specify I had two years. I worked in the hospital for about three years. My current, at that time, my current title was a sterile processing technician and I was certified. I did have some experience. It just wasn't two years. They didn't look into it. I didn't ask no questions. They gave me the money. I was out. Now, easy come, easy go. That was my first contract. I didn't know what I was doing. And I thought I was all, oh, I was bad shit. I was like, I, I'm out of here <laughs> making all this money. And then my contract, my contract was canceled after 60 days. And I didn't get canceled because I got caught or anything. I got canceled because... Well, we all got canceled because of low census. And it happened to have um, a hurricane. I was in Dallas at the time, and it was Hurricane Harvey in Houston. So they pulled all their resources to go to dedicate to that area. So if you want to take that chance and you think that you can do the best that you can do, I personally would I recommend you to do it. I can't tell you what to do. <laughs> If you don't know your stuff, they're going to know that you don't know your stuff. I'm just going to let you know that right now. You cannot bullshit. Um, you can't bullshit people sometimes. You know, you, can get, you can't get away with it. Um, I did, and I made it work for me. I wasn't playing around. I wanted to learn. I wanted to be the best SPD tech I could be. I took all those sets, and I learned them. I took the sets, and I'm talking about, I took like four or five sets of the same sets, and I did them over and over and over until I learned it. And also, 
I um I made sure that I was asking questions and you know understanding what's going on. I became a mem member of Isham. I read the articles and I just became good. You have to have the will the willpower and you have to have the bravado. I'm not gonna tell you that you're just gonna be like, oh my da da la da. No, it ain't gonna work like that. It's a contract, whether you're good, whether you're bad, whether they need you, whether they don't need you. If you take a travel assignment, you have to know that there are um, a possibility that they will not uphold their end and they can cancel you. That is the risk you're gonna take as a traveler. And you have to have, for me personally, emergency funds to get you to the next travel assignment or the next job. So please be aware of that. Okay guys, so that is how you get certified and how you start traveling. The next video is anybody who has questions and I try to answer as many that I got and also upgrades from the CRCST. There's three more other certifications that I wanna go over. If you do not, if you're not interested in that, you don't have to watch that video, but I did split it up to other certifications that you can hold for star processing and frequently asked questions or some questions that people have asked me. <laughs> um, so stick around for that. Thank you guys so much. And check out my old videos for the whole picture of what we do on this channel. And I hope to see you in the next video and in the future because we still are traveling and we're gonna keep on going and getting new adventures and new tech, uh, new certifications and all this other stuff that I'm doing. So I want you guys to see the progress that we're going to make and have some adventures on the way. All right. Bye, guys.